some things are like on point and so relatable and so personalized to you that that's the content that is today Welcome to the Executives, the show where we navigate in the intricate world of executive leadership, exploring strategies, insights, and personal stories of successful professionals, shaping the global business landscape. I'm your host, Majid, and joining us today is Gargi. She originally comes from India and has over 10 years of experience in performance marketing, social, digital marketing, and also brand marketing. Currently, she is working as a performance marketing expert at Casablanca. Let us welcome Gargi. आदाब और आपका इस पॉडकास्ट में खुश आमदीद थैंक यू सो मच माजिद आपका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया टू वेलकम मी टू दिस शो एंड आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड एंड हैप्पी टू बी हियर सो लेट अस जंप राइट इनटू इट टेल अस अबाउट हु इज गार्गी आई एम एन एक्सपीरियंस मार्केटर विद ओवर 12 इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन डिजिटल स्पेस सोशल मीडिया कंटेंट क्रिएशन ईमेल परफॉर्मेंस इन प्रोडक्ट मार्केटिंग एंड आई हैव हैड द प्रिविलेज ऑफ वर्किंग विद डाइवर्स ब्रांड्स एंड प्रोडक्ट्स and companies and honing my skills and crafting effective data driven strategies that drive results now i won't say like i'm a marketing superhero or something i'm just a regular human who has seen trends come and go and probably spent too much time in watching cat videos i love watching cat videos so if you're up for some real talk about the ups and downs and occasional face palm moments in my marketing stints grab your favorite snack and let's dive right in hashtag #gargi hashtag #gargi good so you you mentioned you like cats i mean i'm also a cat person oh wow have you seen those videos like my favorite is where they there is a cat that is actually making food you know like that's my favorite like cat plus making food oh yeah so, two two favorite things that, that those are also two of my most favorite things watching cat videos and food and when they mix it's just ultimate thing and there are so many cat memes coming up have you seen the recent one when there are like crying cat and uh different cats making yeah you know it's 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 a total be like and watch it all day and i do watch it yeah yeah like like the employer comes to the employee uh, we are giving you more responsibility but no raise the employee goes like you sure no raise yes we are sure and then the employee cat basically goes like okay then i I'm, i'm i'm the thankful but no thank you <laughs> So it is it is hilarious. Yes. It is, it is, it is amazing. It's hilarious and refreshing and I mean it's it's really nice. I spent way too much time in that and mm. I I do not regret doing that because it's it's really good. It's that good. That's the power of content, right? Absolutely. I mean that's the power of content and that's the power it holds over you that even when you're not consuming content or even when you're not like uh on social media those things are in your head you know those dialogues and stuff that you use in your day to day lives like with with when you're talking to your friends or colleagues or in general in any social setting you come up with memes mm. or you reply with memes and the other person understands that so that, that's the power it holds towards us mm. and i also see the the best part for me about scrolling through these memes is that i can relate to them i'm like oh yeah i have seen that happening you know like i saw another meme i don't remember it was about mistakes that uh, you do in making uh, videos and content creation you know and i immediately was okay so that's something i am doing wrong that's something i know someone else is doing wrong that's also something i know it was in the form of memes you know Com- uh, they combined cat videos and baby videos uh-huh. and so on but it was it was really cool approach you know how they were like um, using like existing content but mapping it onto a problem uh-huh. of business you know uh-huh. it yeah some some things are like on point and so relatable and so personalized to you that that's the content that is today but yeah that that is the thing that is, that you resonate with it so much that it 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 just becomes a part of your life you can't really mm. separate that okay that's why you respond in meme talk or you remember all of those things or something like that happens in real life and you're like yeah that's the meme i read today you know and it now it happened in real life so. yeah i i have a very good friend i'm he's sending me his uh, pictures of his baby and uh, once he sent me a picture where um, the baby was like confused you know he was like looking confused mm-hmm. and then i added the caption 
my mom promised me that she will make biryani today but she made tinde like uh, you know so and he ended up sending it to his entire family like he was like mother this is bloody hilarious and this is my face you you know when when uh, we have to eat tinde instead of biryani because i thought we are having biryani yes yes that that's absolute you're like ha huh? okay i think tinde is very relatable it's like hashtag desi very very relatable you just you don't even have to explain the context that okay tinde is a very boring vegetable that that your mom cooks and you're like looking for something really delicious but then you have to eat this healthy vegetable that's good for you and yeah it's not tasty at all but then <laughs> we we can talk about cats you know for for hours and also about memes and so on but our topic that we have for discussion is navigating the digital landscape mm-hmm. a multifaceted journey mm-hmm. from content creation towards performance marketing mm-hmm. but before we dive into that i would love to understand you work for casablanca what is casablanca doing so casablanca is a virtual camera that enables eye contact in video calls today you see a lot of videos where there is no eye contact especially and it's not authentic so either it comes out as you're having constant eye contact like your even when you're not looking at your screen it still shows you that you know you you are engaged or you're really looking into it but casablanca does exact opposite it offers an authentic um, experience for video conferencing and it's it's simple as in you just tune in change your camera settings and it's on and you're focused and you're engaged within the video call interesting that that's cool you can't force someone to look in the camera throughout a one hour call yes. you know or a two hour call Absolutely. or a half an hour call it's very hard it's very hard it's very unproductive that you're spending so instead of spending your time into doing your actual work you are actually mm-hmm. very focused to look at the camera and you you're driving all your power and your will and you can't even see the other person's reaction i think that that is the worst mm-hmm. part of it and you really have to just train yourself or spend hours to train your brain to just stare into the camera and it, it does not do anything for you you know probably mm-hmm. it does something for the other person so having a solution right up where you are engaged that it's good for the other person you can also be focused you don't have to like train yourself or be like constantly looking into the camera that's not natural then natural conversation you look elsewhere you look around you break the eye gaze you're not constantly like staring at the other that's that's not natural i mean if someone does mm. it to you in real life you'd really find it creepy yeah that's true i mean uh, when when you're doing a meeting as well right i mean if you're sitting in a in a conference room with 10 people you don't look at 10 people like like straight in their mm-hmm. eyes you know it's 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 creepy like you mentioned and it's also i, I find it a bit weird mm-hmm. like uh, if you're looking at one person also it becomes very weird like you start becoming conscious i mean the other person that you're talking to or your conferencing partner it it becomes really weird if it's just a general stare mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. it's not authentic it's not natural that's mm-hmm. definitely not what casablanca does interesting that's cool what initially drew you towards digital marketing or content creation so well it all started with with a healthy dose of curiosity and a little bit of uh, fomo you know the fear of missing out so uh, it's like you know the idea of reaching out to people beyond geographical boundaries was incredible and plus content creation is a field where you have plethora of ideas you know it's it's a place that where you can be anything like we were just talking about memes you know it can be funny it can be serious it can be informative or it can be bizarre like downright bizarre and still there would be someone out there who would connect with it you know the entire mm-hmm. idea was like it was fine it, it was like finding a secret passage to share stories and make make splash out in the the digital space that that is what made me really dance my way into digital marketing and content creation and create stories that people resonate with because i think mm-hmm. at the end of the day as human beings we resonate with stories more than anything that's true because if i if something had happened to me i will remember it more yes you know and if i see that gargi had this experience and i had this experience i will say hmm that means i can follow or i can connect with you and you know there is more common 
and there is more common in between a lot of people than they think about it you know because sometimes people don't realize that they're, they they are uh, not talking about it but they have a lot more things in common mm-hmm. and that's something you can see from social media mm-hmm. i mean general content creators as well so you have started working in content creation digital marketing for more than a 10 years now 12 mm-hmm. years you mentioned right so how have you seen your approach mm-hmm. towards digital marketing evolve mm-hmm. let's say since you started the evolution like every evolution that there is it started with very basic sort of thing like you know your uh, f- flip phones you know the tiny phones that you had before that you could fit in your hand and now you have like the latest smartphones though the flip phones have made an entry back today but still it's learning to ride a bike with your without those you know the those side wheels where you don't have support mm-hmm. and you try to balance things and you fall and then you get up and next time you try not to crash too hard into it so th- that's the entire thing that that's the that's that's the entire process that you start riding slowly you are able to maintain balance and as you really grasp that control over your bike you can start doing more stunts you know the school things uh, with it so, so th- the process is like that and the, the evolution is also something in that sphere that earlier it was all about the basic the one size fits all approach that you just put like one thing everywhere and see what happens but now it's more sort of crafting you know strategies with a purpose to it of course there is always there is trial and error that remains an integral part of this of of creating content of the digital sphere because you're dealing with so many personalities out there you it, it's like you're one content can be read by so many people with different mindsets with different cultural backgrounds it might be funny somewhere else not so funny in other location so now it's not ju- just about being online it's being online with with a purpose you know there has to be some strategy along with it that you have to have some purpose with it so that's how you delve into things so. that's very true because i mean we have so many people who are on linkedin on instagram twitter tiktok facebook pinterest snapchat i don't even remember all the networks now it's so many networks that i always sometimes even forget some but uh, it's important to have a reason why are you on a network mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely i think whatsapp also launched this community thing right mm-hmm. so does it make sense that everyone starts building communities because that's what happening now right i mean everyone is just creating communities and adding you if they were a, you you're a customer from them and then you end up leaving that place because uh, i have I, i buy grocery from a lot of shops mm-hmm. you know like uh, the indian shop uh, pakistani shop or the turkish shop sometimes you know and some of these shops started creating their own groups mm-hmm. uh, communities on whatsapp just to share information but if i go to the shop like maybe twice a month i wouldn't need to be in a community so what's the exact purpose of that community it depends uh, actually that's that's a very good point that that you have seen that everyone is trying to tap into all that is latest all that is new and trying to experiment with it so i would say it's a good thing that that if if a company or your local grocery shop or Mm. shop that you rarely visit or visit uh, very much they are trying to really tap into it it's good to experiment so this is one case so you are not very much like okay you visit it twice so it is it is good but for someone who visits it regularly or really needs to know okay what are the deals going on uh, is there a discount on it should i go so if they find that okay there's a discount for two days and pro- they visit it regularly for them it's it's a great mm. thing to have to be on that community that is the target audience those are the people or those are the customers that they uh, bring out all these deals discounts mm-hmm. probably some saturday discount or weekly discounts out for so for them and jumping on this bandwagon of community it's good to build a community it's good to have uh, customers who are loyal to you who purchase from you regularly mm-hmm. and who whom you can cater to you can you can really the the shops or can really bring out um you know different discounts different deals for for these kind of people but 
mm-hmm. it it should cater to only those so that's that's how mm-hmm. they would start filtering out uh, probably for uh, that that's how you bring out the target audience you know so not not regularly for you probably who is like into like twice monthly so then for you it would be good to probably reach you via email not so much via whatsapp communities or instagram communities but email is something that you can check like once a month cool mm-hmm. you, you would be also happy with that so you know you have to really uh, customize it according to your target group or the audience you have and give them what they need that that's what i meant being online with a purpose what is your purpose why are you out there and whom should you cater to and how so and what kind of content should you bring out for those people and at what times and why are what channels so many factors it many mix and matches going mm-hmm. on uh here but that that is something that is incredibly important today that's that's very true because uh, i mean the thing is i do go there every month twice i know what i want i see what the deals i want to utilize but the the problem i have there is because it's a small business they don't have many social media people or they don't have marketing teams you know so what happens in most of these communities is because they say we want to help the community so i can check if they have something in the, in the shop or no and i can check the price by t- sending in a message so what happened was in one of these groups people starting posting messages hey i'm subletting my apartment or i'm looking for an apartment or i'm uh, looking for a job i'm you know i'm moving to berlin and so on which became because which becomes really annoying you know that that was not the purpose of them and then that community becomes one sided because the admin says you know what now we are just going to use it as one side communication you know mm-hmm. like they restrict everyone from sending message so but this is all part of strategy mm-hmm. and it's all part of process like you also mentioned like how why do you want to uh, be on a particular platform and why not that's that's something you have to decide mm-hmm. what's the reason so but we also should talk about content right content content which is the the core of anything like social media be it facebook instagram twitter tiktok everything. so on <laughs> everything the the whole point is you need engaging content mm-hmm. so first let's talk about what is engaging content when you say engaging content in the word itself when you say engaging it's very specific to whom are you targeting again is it engaging so if you show me cat videos very engaging for me very nice if you show me some sort of okay how to construct a house with and what tools would you want to use while constructing that great video the 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 quality of the video might be great the content might be like very expert very good tips but it's not relevant to me it's not engaging mm-hmm. for me so the first the first uh, rule of content revolves around your target audience and what they want it understanding what, what your target audience is what your target audience requires what resonates with them right the next thing that comes in in that is to create a compelling narrative and great visuals so that that is paramount so once uh, and but that is a se- second step so as i told you if you show me great visual great uh, narrative expert tips on cre- house constructions i'm the wrong audience for it so that's the second step though it's very important so once you have identified what kind of target audience do you have what do they resonate with what are their interests the second step is to create a very good visual a very compelling narrative and the third thing is to optimize it on different platforms so how would you do for example it's exactly so as i can simply simplify it it's content creation is like preparing for a great conversation so you are not putting out content for one so it's it's like you're preparing a great conversation with one person on social media it's it's a one to one conversation rather than one to many don't think of it as one one to many but that one person or that one target audience that you have so first thing you do when you're having a great conversation is be a good listener you listen why do you do that is to understand what kind of topics does this person like what kind of uh interest this person has or what topics does your audience 
uh, resonates with you know so tuning into that is very important so you understand that next is you create uh, great visuals you create great narratives a compelling story to actually build two way communication with that person and not not like is a one to many it should be relevant it should be relatable it should be valuable and they should feel connected to it you know and have great visuals and presentation if you're putting out something the quality should be really good it should it should have a really good quality it should be visually appealing and lastly after these three things is the feedback so you analyze the metrics you analyze the numbers you analyze the the uh, conversation that happened did did the uh, did your target audience uh, react to it did they engage with it did they like it did they comment on it did they repost it what happened or did they dislike it was it not up to their taste what happened with it so feedback is crucial in this thing and it helps you to refine and tailor your approach uh, mm-hmm. with social media for your future reference so yeah those are like you have to orchestrate those things to have a meaningful dialogue just like you would when you're conversing with other person listening putting out great valuable content that that they really like and lastly to keep an eye on the feedback that you receive not focusing on all the social media but let's just talk about instagram for mm-hmm. example or tiktok any, any any network instagram is a good example because instagram has a lot of content as well mm-hmm. the thing that i notice is let's say i'm looking for cat videos mm-hmm. or anything or f- food videos there is so much content mm-hmm. that you have literally 30 seconds or 10 seconds to get the audience get them engaged and make them follow you or you know make them a customer mm-hmm. so it's getting really hard and i was noticing that now people don't subscribe that easily because they have already subscribed to so many channels that they are like huh if i subscribe to one more then they will start bombarding me with more content you know the channel is good and everything but i don't want more things in my news feed and i do the same now i mean i don't follow too many people i only follow people i know i don't follow brands mm-hmm. i just Uh, I'm really picky. If I follow a brand, then I really, really like them. Otherwise, I will like go there myself and see what content they posted new. And does it interest you? Yeah. Uh, but I don't give them a follow. Yeah, not yet. You have to be convinced. So yeah. there is, there is so much. Like I said, there is so much content out there, and so much content duplication. Because mm. you know, there are there are the success metrics that if something is working. and if something is has good numbers or good metrics and you, if you identify that and all the content creators they start duplicating that and you see similar content working very similar so it, it's easy to replicate you know if something is working is you, you can see that the algorithms on some social sites and it's, it's having great comments and great metrics and so many people liking it sharing it and it's it's everywhere you have this trending music in in instagram that happens you have a very particular format for in, uh, for linkedin that people try to uh, replicate so there is so much uh, replication that happens that finally the end user the consumer as as consumers that we are consuming the content we become very so be, with our limited att- attention it becomes a lot to take in it, it, mm-hmm. there are like so many choices you know you have that decision making you, you're stuck with that decision making there you you really do not want to follow everyone and consume that much content with your limited time limited uh, attention span so then it becomes really that you, you you're convinced you have to be convinced as a consumer you need to have enough evidence that okay this particular channel is worth my time it's it, it is giving me either entertainment it's giving me the education or it is giving me some kind of value that i can take back with me i mean the, it has to have some value that you can take with yourself so mm-hmm. it can be in form of education entertainment whatever that that they put on but yes that is that, and that's why brands have to be very aware that they are not just bombarding people you know with okay similar case some if uh, something works 
great, but you have to try and experiment. So in addition to all the points I said before, variety and the content mix that you put out is crucial because you cannot. So if there is certain kind of blog that works, does not mean that you can just keep replicating that uh, all the time. So you have to have a good mix of uh, different types of content to keep your audiences engaged, to keep them entertained, to give them the value uh, so that, you know, uh, you leave the audience wanting for more. They want to see more and they keep coming back for more. You have to earn that follow. You have to earn that like because yeah. now with with the plethora of content creators and plethora of content, brands putting out content, individuals putting out content, um, influencers putting out content. It's become so much that you really have to earn that follow or like or engagement. And I mean, it's really important to have a good variety. It's really important to really think about your audience and give them what they want and make them coming for more. So they should expect that, okay, I want to see more from this particular account or this particular brand or this particular individual. <laughs> so it's it's very interesting that how brands are also like trying to push content mm -hmm. because they want their engagement to be high, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at any big brand, I'm talking about brands like Zara, H&M, you know, these big, big, big brands, none of them have a really high engagement rate. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about extremely high. Mm -hmm. And like industry wide, I was looking, the average uh, engagement rate on LinkedIn is about 2%, which is considered good. So mm -hmm. if you have an engagement rate of 2%, you're already doing good. I mean, I, I understand that as well, because there would be so many times I have so many people have uh, like a few thousand people. I I have imagine if every single person starts posting one post a day, mm -hmm. I'm not saying a hundred, I'm just saying one person post one thing a day, three lines. And if I have a thousand people, I have to read 3000 lines of content. And then I have to decide if I'm going to engage with it or not. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very, it becomes a lot of content for me to digest and to be able to process and to be able to utilize. That's true. It gives you a decision making paralysis almost because you can make a set number of decisions as human beings, you have capacities, you know, mm -hmm. that's why I say, finally, you need to understand that you're dealing with humans, numbers, metrics, everything great, but you're mm -hmm. dealing with humans. So you have to know what are their motivations, what do they value, what are their capacities, what are the limitations, what is the psychology. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when when you are so even even there are so many studies that say that you know if if you're given uh, a lot of e-commerce studies, if you're given if if you're on a, a detergent aisle for example, and if you see five detergents, something you it would be easy for you to make. Okay, this 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 are these are the differentiators. Okay, I choose this. Great. If you're seen with twenty. And you have to really see what is the difference between these 20 and make a decision based on it. It is very likely you'd be like, okay, I don't need detergent like right away. Maybe I think about it, come back tomorrow and then buy something. And after going home, probably you'll just be like, okay, whichever comes first in your news feed or I mean, in your grocery app or whatever that you're mm -hmm. taking it from, you just go and select that. So that is very likely people face that decision. That's why you, one has to be like very careful. And today's uh, world, the attention span is anyway decreasing and decreasing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. That's true. Because I mean, you, TikTok keeps telling you put longer videos on TikTok, but not everyone actually sees a video longer than one minute. Whenever I see the videos longer than one minute, I'm like, swipe up. Yeah. No, you, you, are, you don't even have to think, right? Yeah. You just, you just do that. Too, too long. Yeah, too long. <laughs> and you're just like swiping and okay, going to the next one. Mm -hmm. So it has to be interesting enough, like the entire one minute. So one minute is also like quite long. 60 mm -hmm. seconds is quite long. It's like 30 seconds video, or really short videos that, that really, uh, because then people watch it actually completely. That That's also a metric for social media platforms and their algorithms. Like, are you watching is that really being watched entirely or are people skipping in between? So if it's watched entirely and people are engaging with it, it's promoted more uh, versus something that's like too long and people leave in between, then it's not really promoted uh, ahead. 
so that that's also the thing with it so you have to finally keep all of these things in mind while creating a good content what kind of challenges uh, or what what have been some of the challenges because this is a very demanding field right creating mm-hmm. content that everyone likes or most of the people like it's it's not easy and it's i'm sure it's filled with amazing challenges so what were some of the challenges that you have faced while creating content and how did you actually overcome them okay so i love this question this field is full of challenges and problem solving now that's the part that i love most about it and how so you have to tap into you know different fields and not just about i'm not just talking about the marketing core marketing here but also psychology because you're dealing with human beings philosophy data analytics business goals kpis the market and uh, technological changes and it, in addition to all of these things it's also about being creative you know creative and dynamic and daring so you have to tap into your left and right brain at the same time and it's it's a uh, and have a great balancing act because at one time you're doing so much you're like juggling it's like that juggling act where uh you, you are doing multiple things at the same time you are tapping into your creativity uh, but yet you have to be focused about the metrics or the data or is it following the business goals so the challenges here are ever evolving you know it's it's like different things that you face so there is no one thing but it's this field is so dynamic and it changes at a drop of a hat so you really have to be like constantly on the go you have to be always uh, trying so it's like catching a train that's always changing tracks you know you or you're finding the right key the right door which is always changing but again that is what makes it so thrilling uh, and exciting so i think challenge there's no one big challenge but there are multiple things that you keep facing and it keeps mm-hmm. changing like day to day time to time uh year to year you would have many different things that you face before and now and that's how it is and that that's really thrilling hmm. interesting this i mean the thing is people psychology changes also with the time right uh, they see something and then they decide something else so mm-hmm. like you mentioned this is all very rapidly evolving mm-hmm. and also because there is the the number of content generated is not reducing it's just keep, it keeps on increasing so people are uh, like it's harder to get the attention of people mm-hmm. so i think that's that's also like a, a key issue that people have like even when i'm create like creating the the smaller reels for the episode launch it's very hard that i have to magically fit like an hour long of things like uh, valuable advice or valuable information into like 30 seconds or 1 minute you know uh-huh. it's 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 very hard but it's also fun because then people see the diverse type of questions or diversity in the actual podcast itself now talking about content and now you're working as a performance marketing expert right uh-huh. so let's first understand what does performance marketing people generally do so uh, okay so performance marketing is is all about uh, numbers you know and metrics and uh, all the data that you can gain from different platforms whichever you are active on uh, uh and you you are re- so performance marketing it, it's it's in the name that you are really checking the performance of each marketing activity or campaigns that you're doing mm. and what are the results so and then you refine it or add more things to it like that are lacking you do an ab test and then you put out Uh, uh or experiment again and see how did it work this time and that's that's how it continues so you have to also be continuously updating it refining it checking it how it how it works what are the numbers how are the click through rates on it uh, how are the conversion rates what is the roi that you're getting on campaigns that you have put out so so yeah this 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 is the general compass that goes i mean there are many 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 metrics depending upon what kind of uh, campaigns are you making where what are those platforms and what are your target audiences and what is your key metric so what what is your business objective what is what is your kpi in that domain mm-hmm. so that that is something that you need to really understand in mm-hmm. in terms of uh, performance marketing 
Mm, interesting, uh, interesting. Yeah, and data plays a super important role in this, and that you need to identify what channels resonates with most of your audiences or pinpoint the precise moments that trigger engagement or what is working and why is it working and what is i think this is this is uh if if i have to put it in like one sentence you really need to see what is working and why is it working and what is not working and why is it not working mm-hmm. so there is no sort of okay this worked great or this is not worked and you know you need to know the reason why behind it mm-hmm. and then you know change or refine your methodology or your campaign or tweak something in it and then do a test again and mm-hmm. see how that worked out or did your hypothesis work or put hypothesis on did it work did it not work and see why not Mm. So easier said than done because it's Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's 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 all about I think the most important part in this is continuous optimization. You have to mm. optimize mm. uh faster in this. You have to test, you have to analyze the data, you have to refine your strategies based upon your the performance market uh, the performance metrics that are important for you. Uh and it depends on company to company, product mm. to product. what uh, are your important metrics that it totally depends upon it although one of the things in in performance marketing is you have to be aware of the vanity metrics that might mislead you in a completely different directions so for example let's let's just simplify this and take an example that one of your uh, one of your campaigns performed great it has great engagement millions of views and people are like talking about it great nice it's it's like one of those viral reels nice good things so it has great engagement but you see fewer conversions on it mm. versus and so so this is one of the campaign and the second campaign where one of your campaign has decent engagement so probably just above below your average engagement but it has more uh, conversions you have two of those campaigns now which is great and which is not depends on your kpi or your business goal that you're trying to achieve was it brand awareness do you want people to like really talk about it so the impressions are doing great but if your business goal is to get more conversions then the second reel with like a decent uh, sort of engagement but more conversions really resonated with your target audience or the the group that you're looking for you have a great message market fit the content you put really resonates with your audience so you have tapped into your audience that way because it has more convergence uh, 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 in in the second mm. um, campaign so mm. what you what you should do if your kpi is more convergence and you should focus on the second campaign run more ab tests by refining the content by refining the message check the channels the channel of social platforms the time the format and refine it and see how does it work or if if you tweak little bit of factors here and there how is it doing mm-hmm. so that should be your focus but also keep in mind that the first campaign was about brand awareness it reached more people so your mm-hmm. content mix should have a bit of both but with different purpose you know or a different strategy that the first campaign caters to this kind of audience and this is this is what you're expecting out of it but the second one caters to this kind of audience who convert who are your potential customers so you should know how what kind of content you put out and how and when yeah so so lastly i'd say it, it is important to see the data refine it analyze it and no experiment more on it and you keep doing that and it's rinse and repeat interesting because I, i'm always like whenever i'm talking with uh, friends or someone who's a mentee to me and they are asking much that we are being told to be data driven i am like don't be data driven because data doesn't consider the emotion of people so mm-hmm. you should think of being data informed and add on top of that a layer of emotion you know because maybe the person was not feeling well that's why they didn't convert maybe the person was in underground train you know and the signal stopped out he or she wanted to buy it but the signal stopped out you know the, the emotional and also other factors come into the thing mm-hmm. which basically sort of add a new perspective mm-hmm. 
and also enhance your entire uh, planning and also focus like who should you target campaigns towards right but what key insights have you actually gained in performance marketing that actually impacted how you do marketing or your strategies one of the things uh, when you say that key metrics or what are the key insights it depends again on what your goal or what your north star metric is what is your business objective brand awareness what is your business objective to where are you down in your funnel my, my next question is more towards latest trends because this is a question i've been getting a lot how does someone stay up to date with latest trends or involve themselves with continuous learning especially considering there is so much content being created you know mm-hmm. there is so much stuff coming every day and the thing is like facebook changes their advertising algorithm like every now and then you know like every now and then and google also changes their algorithm yes. i remember before facebook used to say that you need to run an ad for 5 days before we are able to help you optimize your ad like you know give you some suggestions now they have changed it to i think 10 days mm-hmm. and google has changed it to 7 days and they say ideally if you want to run a campaign on google adwords run it for at least 14 days to be able to you know get some better results to be able to get this, like develop a an understanding and this is a question i've been getting like how should someone in marketing stay updated with the latest trends it's so uh, i'd break it up to you there are no shortcuts unfortunately <laughs> this is a field this is this, this is a thing there are no shortcuts two word answer continuous learning you have to learn continuously you have to engage with your industry thought leaders you have to uh, read what is going on in the current market trends what are the algorithmic changes the different platforms are making because it it is important when you are putting out campaigns that you need to know why that so sometimes it's not just the, the your content or you your target audience or the visuals you have or the metric why are you not getting the engagement is also in regards to the uh, algorithm changes that that the platform you're putting content on so you really need to read no engage with uh, different thought leaders take courses take webinars download that research paper read it download that pdf that you found interesting about something read it check what are the uh, upcoming changes so regularly check what are the upcoming changes that that google is making facebook is making uh, what what are the compliance changes that they are making what is new what is obsolete so there is also something that you need to see what are, what is the upcoming changes you already predict or mm-hmm. what is obsolete and not going to work anymore because then you have to tweak your tech stack accordingly you know your technology stack has to be up to date some uh, things will become obsolete or change and then you have to refine it again so the go to methods keep learning there is no shortcut there is no one natural solution to this it takes effort it takes time it takes discipline curiosity and grit to stay on top of trends but you have to be a perpetual student it's it's in an ever evolving class mm-hmm. you cannot take like okay one night and done or any shortcut to this you have to be curious put your eyes on the internet take what you can read everything that interests you or affects you or might affect you and be engaged in that invest your time wisely uh, in learning things because those are the insights that would help you in understanding your campaigns or the work that you're putting out and uh, the audiences that you're putting out to mm-hmm. it's valuable advice when there is no shortcut like i love mm-hmm. to read as well i'm always reading all the time mm-hmm. and it's always good to see that one thing that worked for me didn't work for someone else like because at least in product management what we are doing is always exchanging ideas right so i tell my friends the crazy things i did and then they try that out and doesn't work for them mm-hmm. and they try some crazy things in their offices and it doesn't work for them and uh, it works for them and doesn't work for me so it's all about you have to sort of also experiment right yes But, and you have your personal preference like mm-hmm. someone might like reading someone might like uh, audio 
uh, uh, guides or podcasts, or that would be their way of learning. So there are different learning methods also. So mm-hmm. build your own sort of learning method. What do you like? Uh, what do you prefer? Or mm-hmm. How do you, you want to stay updated? Because mm-hmm. there are so many changes. As I said earlier, there are so many lookouts and uh, approaches to this that you don't have shortcuts you just have to continuously learn mm. continuously keep a watchful eye and be on your tiptoes and be ready to accept whatever it is so this field has a lot of successes and failures so mm. yeah don't give up <laughs> yeah don't give up that's that's very important <laughs> i mean challenges and issues will always come Mm-hmm. So if our lives were a, a linear path, it would be very boring. You know, it would be like like really boring that there's no fun, no entertainment, mm-hmm. no issues, no no struggles. But because of the ups and downs, we start respecting our uptime, and we understand that from down we have we have to learn to stand back up mm-hmm. as well, right? Mm-hmm. But the next question I have is more towards people who are just starting out in marketing. Mm-hmm. Now, marketing is a huge field. Marketing and generally content creation. So what advice would you give someone who is just starting out in digital marketing and uh, content creation? My advice would be to buckle up and enjoy the ride because it's a journey. It, there is no goal. The goal keeps changing. The goal keeps ever evolving. And if you're someone who really likes the challenge, who really has that persistence and discipline to keep going and keep looking out for different goals and changing yourself, then do it. I mean, then then you're the right fit for for, for this field. You know? mm-hmm. So firstly, be curious. Curiosity is your compass. You cannot, uh, uh, you cannot really evolve in here or learn more if, you, if you're not curious enough. So curiosity is your compass. It's a vast landscape uh, that you have to explore. And the best part about it is the more you explore, the more you'll discover and the more things would be there. So it's, it's like it keeps going. So never stop dis- discovering, never stop exploring and never stop asking questions. If you have a question, go out, be bold, ask it, look for it, find people. There are many people who would help you out. So uh, go out, all out on it and yeah, and uh, be adaptable. I think second thing is to be very adaptable, to really have a growth mindset because you're in a dynamic field, you know. So you have to be flexible and adapt to the current uh, situation. So you need to have that growth mindset that you need to learn. You need to take whatever feedback that comes and change according to it. Um, thirdly, don't fear failure. You know, mm-hmm. you have to take success and failure with the same um, with, with with the same attitude. I would say it's it's not easy. Definitely, that if you're success and failure, I mean, yeah. But don't fear failure. It's it's just a learning journey. You will stumble, uh, and that's okay. Embrace it. Embrace success as well as failure because both are temporary. Because you will have, so once you achieve one feat, whether you succeed or not, you will have a next feat coming up very soon. So whatever it is, enjoy it, take learning from it, Mm -hmm. and then move on. So keep going and uh, explore the new and upcoming. And lastly, network. I think networking is a great way of learning. Connect with other people in your field. Uh, What are they experimenting on? What are something that they've done? Learn, Learn from their experiences from their success from their failures and their point of views that is very important um, to have uh, multiple outlooks on things so that you're Mm. not biased about something so have have a very open mind learn do more experiments if you fail that's okay if you succeed great but that's also okay and keep uh, your eyes you know in the future as well Mm-hmm. Uh, but keep looking at your past. It's like driving a car, you know, that you have the big screen in front of you, but mm-hmm. you also check your rear view mirror in between that you're on the right track and driving. So adventure is out there. <laughs> cool. That is very valuable advice. That is so anyone who's starting out, be curious, be adventurous. Don't don't worry uh, if you fail. Thank you so much for joining today. This has been truly inspiring and also very insightful.
Mm-hmm. I mean, um, it was it is very nice to always listen to stories of other people and also share in a few of mine. Mm-hmm. So, would you like to share something as like a, a closing remark for our listeners? Yes, of course. Um, I would say that uh, in navigating this landscape, remember that behind the screens and metrics, there is a human connection. So never forget that that is probably a, a very important thing to keep in your mind. So whether you're just starting your journey uh, or you're a seasoned marketer, may your path be filled with uh, curiosity, resilience, and a sprinkle of magic. Uh, and here is to an exciting future and to all the stories that are yet to unfold. Um, thank you, Majid for having me. It was a really good discussion and I really enjoyed being here. Thank you again. It was it was fun. So to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning into the executives this week. If you found this episode valuable, don't forget to leave a comment, a like, or also if you have questions towards Gargi, uh, leave them into the comments or you can connect with her uh, because I will mention her LinkedIn into the section below and then share it with your network. Until next time, this is Majid signing off.